It's a question that's on my mind as well. I think that when you see a successful week of events like we've had here, it's it's natural to think, boy, maybe we could come back here. Um, so I'm definitely thinking that way, uh, that it's that it's got a lot of potential. I, um, you know, I've never been to a NASCAR week where everybody was in such a good mood and, uh, and everything was just going so well. Um, so it's definitely, you know, something that, that we're thinking about. Um, we, we just started working on next year's schedule with NASCAR, so um, we'll see. I think that, you know, not speaking to next year specifically, I do think that there's definitely, you know, a place uh, in the NASCAR world for North Wilkesboro Speedway. And, um, you know, whether it's a special event like All-Star, maybe one day it's a points event, I don't know. Um, I think it's a very important place for um, for you know short track racing, the, the late model races, the modifieds, um, you name it. This is a, it's a special place. It's like walking into a museum that's active and living and, uh, and very special for the competitors and the fans alike. Uh, Bob Hockris, Fox Sports. Uh, Marcus, so do you, are you gonna have to repave before you have another event? And if so, was there still any thoughts of just making it dirt? Um, great question, and uh, you know, so uh, it depends on who you ask. I talked with Daryl Waltrip earlier before um, before the race, and he said you got to repave this thing. And uh, I talked with um, uh, the King, and he said uh, let him race on this on this old pavement. Um, so th there's a there's a lot of different ways to think about it. I think that um, for that what I think is that our, our team has done an amazing job at preserving the track, keeping it together. Um, they've learned some new things on the surface and kind of managing it, keeping it together, and creating um, a, a really uh, varied surface that I think challenges the teams. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it, how it uh, weathers. And when it needs to be repa repaved, we'll repave it. I think um, I would lean towards not repaving until we absolutely have to. And Marcus, even as we've seen at Atlanta, the technology now with with a repave is different than what it used to be, and the perception yes. can be different. So, well, our, yeah, our our goal in the next repave is to pre, is to present a track that where the asphalt surface is not uh, like a, a parking lot surface. Um, you know, our our paving goal is totally different than uh, what asphalt is actually made for in paving. Um, a, a parking lot or a street, you want it to last for a super long time and you want it to be very smooth. We, um, I, I don't mind how long it lasts. I, I really want it to come out of the, of the box racing really well. So we'll see how, um, how it works. And I'm sure uh, after tonight, we'll have some more data and, and look at uh, what's next. Okay. Let's go to Greg. Greg Engel Forbes. It's kind of along the same line. We keep peppering you with almost the same thing. But I was talking to fans today. There was one guy in particular. He lives five miles from this track. He grew up around this track, um, and he was walking around, and he, and he was in tears. And, and, and I said, uh, you know, he, he said, we're proud. You know, we can go to Darlington. We can go to Charlotte. We can go to others. But those aren't our tracks. This is our track, and we're proud of it. Yeah. And, and so, obviously, we can't sit here and say tonight, we'll be back next year for the All-Star. But what's the immediate future for this track? Is it cars, uh, tour, that kind of thing? You know, what can we tell these guys that, that live close to here and are so pumped up about the immediate future of this track? Yeah, that's great. I, it, it's a real um, – you know, people have talked about how special this is. Um, thousands of people have said to me, you know, you have no idea what this means to our community. Um, so – yeah, I think we all kind of feel that, you know, this this is a special place and a special event, and it's because uh, of this rebirth opportunity. And uh, you know, it's it's never happened before that you've taken a uh, a sporting venue and left it for dead, and it's been revived. Uh, it's a true Lazarus story. And uh, so I, I intersected with with a number of those fans that that had a similar story, and. Uh, for for everybody, I would say this place is going to have racing um, on the calendar in in the very near future. Um, I have had great conversations with um, with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kevin Harvick about you know what what could we do here with the Cars Tour. Um, I think that 
like I said earlier, this place is special for not just the fans, but the competitors alike. And uh, in fact, when I was having that conversation with Daryl Waltrip and, and the King, they asked me, now, how old is this, is this pavement again? And I said it was 84. Uh, and they both looked at each other and said, we raced on this track. <laughs> so what a cool thing, you know, for every race car driver out there to race on the same surface as Richard Petty and Daryl Waltrip and a bunch of other legends. Um, we want to make that available for a lot of racers that uh, will come from all over the country to be here. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Marcus, can you take off your business hat for a second and just describe what it was like, your emotions all weekend coming to and from the track and seeing what was going on and just this place being back to life? Yeah, just incredible gratitude. Um, I am just um, amazed at how hard everybody here worked to make this happen. And, um, you know, Jessica and Steve Swift have led this team of a, a couple hundred people um, that have uh, come to work with a real mission uh, mindset, not, not a typical, um, you know, clock in, clock out uh, mindset, but a real mission mindset. And I think it, uh, it shows up in what they've been able to achieve. I mean, we, they were able to um, start this project in January, and it's May right now. This place was covered in kudzu vines and poison oak and you know, trees growing out of the grandstand uh, less than 12 months ago. And um, you know, they completely built a brand new facility out in, uh, in turn four. Um, Governor Cooper, uh, when I saw him on Wednesday, he said, I, I gave it a 50-50 shot that you would actually get this done. And he said, and I was being generous at the time. Um, so it is truly amazing. And uh, so my feelings, you know, have just been incredible gratitude. I'm just, uh, you know, so inspired by them. It's really, really great. All right, we're going to take two more, and then I think Kyle is wrapping up. We're going to go to Stephen. Stephen, back there. And then we're going to go to Jordan and wrap up. Steve Wilson, SpeedwayDigest.com. This is for both of you. What have you learned out of this experience, and where do you see that experience being able to be translated into other tracks, specifically even Nashville, where you guys are trying to get at? I think for me it was um, that I've learned that the community is really important, and it's the catalyst to, to being successful. Um, and, oh, there we go. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and I just. Uh, just having, you know, listening to them and, and, and being a, a, a voice for them and, you know, just, I don't know, it, the community w was the most important thing to me, I think, in this whole process. And just, I, I really wanted to make them proud. Uh, Terry Parsons was a big part of this. I, I, you, you with your Save the Speedway efforts were a big part of this and, and just, you know, seeing everybody kind of really see what happens when you take a grassroots effort and, and it's, it's a, you know, our field of dreams right now, so. I learned that um, you know how how cool it is that NASCAR fans are truly embracing the history of the sport. Uh, the the history of our sport is uh, more important now than ever, and it's the 75th year of NASCAR. Um, so we you know we finally have uh, a good bit of history that people can look back to. And this um, this weekend, more than I've ever seen, I've, I've seen three generations of fans. Uh, it was very common over the last week to talk with a grandfather, his son, and the grandson. Um, really, really cool to see three generations of family members coming out here and, and how much our fans love the history of the sport. All right, we're going to wrap up with Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. This question's for both of you. Could you speak to Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s role as kind of the ambassador of this track and what he's kind of done to help kind of push things forward throughout the week? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that you could say it wouldn't be possible for us to be here today if it weren't for so-and-so. Um, and there truly are many, many people. And Dale Jr. is a critical part of that. Um, you know, if, if he hadn't um, had the passion and the history for the sport to say, uh, you know, and, and, the, and the passion for iRacing to say, hey, can we just capture this thing for iRacing? 
um, you know, then you wouldn't have the momentum to, um, to, to continue kind of believing, I think. And then, and then we had the, um, the racetrack revival. Dale got behind that, wanted to be a part of it. Grandstand sold out. The, um, this, the, the magic was, was everywhere during the racetrack revival uh, this past August. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, having his platform of his podcasts uh, is just so tremendous. And, uh, I mean, he's, he's the Pied Piper of NASCAR fans uh, around the world. And I think, um, you know, his support was the jet fuel to, um, to make this happen.